So good evening everyone. Video number two. First of all I just want to say thanks very much for all the feedback on the first video. I was quite surprised to be honest with you the amount of people that first of all after watching it. All the comments and generally positive feedback. So definitely I was inspired to do more videos and please keep subscribing and everything else. And as I said at the start of the last video, any comments or feedback, come back to me. So one bit of feedback I did get was in relation to using the iPhone. And I was surprised at the amount of people that actually use their, their iPhones or smartphones, I suppose, to record the videos. And I was actually surprised at the quality of I didn't realise it could give you that good quality. Definitely the feedback was, obviously, as now, it's a bit shaky. And one thing someone said was just to buy a small uh, contraption just to fit onto the tripod for the iPod, iPhone. So I've invested one of them, an expensive £3, and that's on its way. So uh, I won't do a full update tonight. We're losing light. It's quite late. Uh, I said tonight I might just focus on the potatoes or spuds, as we call them. Um, and also just to give you an introduction to a spud I managed to get last week. Probably quite late to put it in, to be honest with you. Um, but I said I'd give it a shot, and there's a bit of a story behind it, and that is something that I do like, trying to grow something a bit unusual, a bit of a story behind it, more so than necessarily going for the, the prize-winning uh, big crop. So first of all, we'll just have a quick look through the bags, see how things are doing, uh, I'll give you a bit more detail, which I didn't do the last time, on what species or varieties I have. So as you can see, they're not doing too bad. Some of these went in a couple of weeks in, in, in space between them, so expect that there's a bit of difference in growth probably depends on the variety as well i probably have some of the bags too high so the amount of light getting in if that's a factor i'm not sure you can let me know as in the light isn't getting into the bag but let's see so i've actually got four types of potato in this year um to be honest i just picked up the ones that came to hand in the shop that were to be the cheapest to be honest i grew tara last year which was great and orla um couldn't find them this year, but definitely if, if, if anyone's doing particularly orally, I'd recommend them. So within the bags this year, we have one solid potato, Charlotte, and then the rest are second earlies, and they're Wilja, Jemson, and Astina. Not varieties I've heard of myself, or even I hear other people mention in the videos, but um, I suppose interesting to see how they get on. So as I explained last week, um, I do some of these buckets. I started last year. These are just basically small black plastic buckets, a lot smaller maybe than some of the containers that people do use. And they're not too bad, as you can see we're getting some growth and it's dead. I won't necessarily earth up the buckets, um, I just leave that gap at the top to allow water go in. On the bottom I keep the drainage holes quite small because it, it can take a good bit of water to keep them, keep them moist uh, and really I just water them every night and I suppose that's one advantage of being in your back garden. You don't have to be travelling up to the allotment so you can actually come out every night. Sometimes that's a good thing and sometimes it's a bad thing. So again as I said within the bags you got some starting there and in the bags I will earth up as I go. But to be honest I've looked at loads of different videos and I'm, I'm not convinced about the earthing up uh, thing. Some people who, who seem to get good crop just put them straight in. Some people swear by earthing up so I said I'd do a bit of both and we'll see what happens. But in the bags as I say we will earth up and as you can see it's not too bad. I will start to air time up, some of them are a bit bigger than others, but that will be a job for tomorrow. And again, the bucket's doing well, I think it's just because they're contained. And again, just, they're growing okay, and just getting going, finally. I'll go carrots and that, and as part of the next update, which I'll do as a general update, I'll, I'll just go through how I'm getting ready to put the carrots in, plan to put them probably in the first week in June, which is coming fast. And then there's one more here at the end, which is literally just starting to break through there. Okay, so that's what I have in. And as I said, I did come across a friend of mine gave me some seed potatoes, which are a bit different and have a bit of a story. So these are what's called lumper potatoes, or lumpers. So anyone who really knows about those have probably heard either the, the variety or heard of the story of recently. But essentially, yeah, I'm sure most people have heard of the Irish famine, which happened mid-19th century. Um, and put a long story short, blight came, wiped out pretty much half the, the crop, potato crop the first year and all the potato crop second year. And uh, pretty much led, as it says, to, to the famine in Ireland. So this was actually the variety of potato that was pretty much grown at the time. Uh, some smart potato farmer up the north of Ireland has actually managed 
to recultivate these and actually grow a commercial stock and is actively selling them with the story that goes with them which to be fair to him is, is, has, a, has a good story with it and probably will draw attention but as I said earlier on I suppose I'm going to give them a shot and um, it's probably quite very late putting them in but I only got them so I'm going to give them a shot and this the, the other story behind them is the reason why they were grown seemingly is they were so prolific uh, and they grew pretty much in any soil particularly uh, grew well in poor soil which was just common enough at the time so as I say Sounds like a, a perfect spud, uh, grows anywhere in bad soil and gives you a lot of crop. The man who gave them to me reckoned up to 26 uh, but the was off each one. And the other thing they did say is that they're so prolific is that they recommend that you could even chop them in half. So I'm going to try one, a bit of them in half, just in a small bucket. And I'm going to put two or three into this container here which is again slightly bigger than the bags. Um, it's one that I just have left. As I was mentioning earlier on, I just keep the drainage hole. It's quite, quite small, as you can see. The same in the bucket. Harder to see. Not too many. I did see a video during the week where someone was, did their first airlies. And um, as you can see, when they emptied them out, the bottom of the bucket was actually quite dry. So that's one of the reasons why I do it. And the other thing I just have there is what really the only food that I use in the garden. And that's poultry manure. There's loads of different varieties out there. And there's some with seaweed. And this is just to be honest the cheapest one and that's where I use that but I use it on everything and I think it's brilliant uh, and usually what I do as I'll show when I have the job done is uh, I just finish everything off with a top dressing of this uh, once it gets wet it bulks up and then you can easily just break it into the top of the soil so back to the lumper as I say I'm going to stick them in and give them a shot we'll see it'll be interesting to see the, the amount of potatoes we get back off them will they live up to their name will they produce a bumper crop now the only catch is when you read different websites and I'll add a couple of links, they're not actually meant to be that nice. But we'll give them a shot. They're described as being halfway between a waxy potato and a flowery potato, which some might say is, is the happy medium or perfect, but other websites or potato, potato specialists wouldn't just would describe them as being probably lower down the lower down the pecking order when it comes to taste. But let's try them and I'll definitely cook a few when we grow them. And we'll keep an eye on these over the season uh, and I suppose when we're emptying them out we might empty out one of the other varieties beside them just to, just to compare and I definitely will promise a, a taste test as well just to, just to test that theory. Give me a few minutes, I'll get them in and just quickly finish off, it's 20 to 9 now so we're doing pretty well, I can't even believe we're out still and being able to video, hopefully it's not too dark. You're probably wondering why the foil is underneath, I'll we'll cover that in my next video. Um, but again, tonight it was just handy, a handy surface to work on. Okay, then I'll get to work and come back to you in a minute. So that's it. That's the lumper, as it has been described. The oldest, newest Irish potato. And we'll keep an eye on them as the season goes on. Hopefully we get a few more evenings like this. I think we start picking up. So thanks for tuning in. As I said, I'm going to wait for, get me attachment for the tripod. Hopefully come early next week and... We'll do a general update. Things haven't moved that much since I uh, last updated, but we'll keep, we'll keep in touch. So that's it for now. Slot.